Council, so they're the resource team that supervise contact. Now, I can't mention any names, obviously, but um, I've heard of, of two contact workers that that um, in Middlesbrough they remove children because they get funding from the government. Now in Durham, um, the, the, I've heard from them that they try and keep the children with the family as much as they can. Now in this area, they they can apply for a, um, I think they call it like a capex, so they can say oh to the to the government we need Middlesbrough Council could say we need five billion this year. Um, because we need to support uh, children's services. So it, it's acting as a, a funding block for the government. Now, the thing is as well, if, if you've noticed around Middlesbrough at the moment, there's a lot of government investment going up. There's a lot of um, buildings going up around sort of where the core area is and things. There's a lot of investment being put. In, there's a lot of houses going up in the area. And I'm thinking, where does this money come from? Because the government can only get, only get so much. And I think, I'm, I'm pretty sure that they're using our children and stealing them from the, and, and I've heard as well Middlesbrough is in the top five of the whole of the country for looked after children which is which is it's crazy I think and, and, which and, is a small well, town. And, and then you look at walk around in Middlesbrough the most you say is drug addict and the people use drugs and then you stop one day and they ask them for why them live in the street and they use drugs like that for why the first thing them say because I, I, my kids be removed I never say my kids again and then them going down and then down and then down to stay like homeless and is. the drugs in the street. They, they, they don't just think about the impact of, of your mental health when they remove the children. You've got to think about it financially as well because you could live in a property. That family couldn't be working. They might be working for, for various reasons. My mum was ill health, you know, and um, which I'm currently taking medication for at the moment. That's what's one of the reasons. And the, the thing is, if, 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 you know, things stop, housing benefit stops. Um, oh, oh, you know, every, everything stops, so it just puts you out. It puts you back. It puts you into poverty of, of them children. So it's it's, it's not just the the, men, the mental impact of it. So you need that. You need that support, especially financially as well, to keep keep yourself a roof above your head. And because they've removed them children, people end up on the street. It's happened to our friend. Yeah. You know. A lot of people they've, we've met, they've actually, they've actually had to give up their house because they don't get the, the money which will, will, will help fund the property and they've actually had to go into rehab and residential rehab where they can live there for six months and then when they, do, when they, when they are released and they've done the, pro, the six month programme and the 12 step programme, they move out into a one bedroom flat which is that's all they can get at the time and then, then the, the, the social services will, will use that as an excuse not to return the children to them because they've not got suitable accommodation for them. Them. Yeah. You know, people, people are struggling in this area as well because they've introduced they've, they've introduced universal credits in this area as well. Before any other area in the country, they've used they've used this area on universal credits like like guinea pigs. You know, they, we, we we feel like um, you know, so so it's not so you've got the impact of, of going on to universal credits. You know, and then there's, you know, like I mentioned before, having a criminal record, not having a driving license. I've tried everything in my power. I'm an engineer. You know, I've I've, I've gone from a, you know, earning a, earning a lot of money. You know, um, in in a high pay, high paid job through one stupid mistake, which is which I accept is, is you know it's it's my fault. You know, it's my, I put myself in that situation, but it's it's just another barrier farming now. So I can't, you know, I, I, I can't. Because I, I need to be mobile to be, to do my engineering job. I, I used to work at Nissan. I've worked at Savic. I've worked, you know, I need to be there, and I can't do. So I'm in I'm in such a situation now where I've worked all my life since I was 16 years of age. You know, I'm you know I'm nearly 40 now, and I've, I've and it's just only these last two years now where I've where, where I've, I've really fell on hard times. I've never you know I've. I've it's, this has been the worst time of my life, and and and, and, and for my and, wife and, as well. And, 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 and there's health, no support there. For, there's my no health support. issues. I know well me at all. I risk to have a stroke any time. My medication go highest now. All the time it go more and more. And the highest time menopause as well. And for I have my last child, I've been intensive care for two months. I nearly die for have this child. Like them say, them have any problem with their parents, nothing. And the, how many times we explain it to them, we say this to them, them don't care. The last social service look like she, we never told her, all that time she, oh yeah. yeah. Every time we tell her about it's, this. There's a, there's, a, there's a massive communication breakdown as well, we, we found between, between social services, the resource team, um, you know, I mean, typical example today, the, the social workers gave us the 6th of August for the for the lack review date, so it's only just because of my trust issues that I've actually gone into the office myself and asked 
And if, if we'd have missed that appointment, we don't get we, no we, chance. God, we won't get any more chances. You know, that'd be it. So the, so the thing is, we, we've actually been in and found out that it's actually four days before we, we but thought why it was. Get the day she, she said it was, ha right. she said it was at half 11 on the 6th of August. How often did you see this children? Um, we see them once a month. So, so w when there was on an interim care order, we was we was um, we, we wanted week. to see them three times a week. So after the final order was granted, they wanted us to see the children four times a year. So it'd be um, once every three months, and only because our, our barrister did fight a little bit for us, we managed to get the ch to see the children once a month. So we get two hours contact for once a month, and it's contact in the community. So we take them to the park, or we'll take them for something to eat. But you know, sometimes what they'll do, they'll they'll book a dentist appointment. They'll want me to book a dentist appointment for them. So that two hours of that month, it's happened before. Where I've got, we're supposed to be spending, spending quality time with my children, and we're sat in a dentist waiting room waiting for them to get to you. Now I can understand, you know, I am I am their parent, and it is my responsibility to to look at their health issues. But when we, you know, when you don't get that much time with them, and you only see them once a month for two hours, I don't think it's fair at all. Um, there's been other instances with social, with the social worker as well, where she's since since she took over in September, she's never done a home visit. She's never been out to see us. We've always had to come into a meeting and see her, and we've we've had instances where um, where I've, I've I've had a you know job previously where where I've had to finish early and um, I've, I've got go to a meeting and then as soon as I'm just going to walk into Middlesbrough House, I get a phone call or a text off her to say that um, I'm sorry the meeting's been cancelled. We've not booked a room. We've not. Um, um, there's been a conflict of, uh, of room booking, so so the, you know there's the things like that that's happened where there's just a total communication. If if you text her, if you phone her, she never answers, you know, and and you know and and I feel bad, you know, if, if it, I've not had to do it yet, is where I um, where after I go and speak to her manager. What we was told by the independent reviewing officer, if we have any issues with social with the social worker, this was at the last meeting in February, is to, to, uh, that we should go to the IRO direct. When we she she said times? to us, and, we, and we've been a couple of times to see her because there's been issues which have been documented. Now I've I've wrote a lot of things down that that are up for discussion um, of, of where social services have, have failed us over the past but twelve it, months. Another you know? thing as well, I think is very wrong. Uh, Everyone we have is only younger girls. No one have a child. No one have any experience in life. Yeah. No one don't know where is the pain for for one mother, for one father, have one child, grow up your child. Yeah. Them don't have any experience. Now, the, now the the, the, the the finish college and they go 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 yeah. mess up in the people's life. The social worker that actually removed the children was 22 years of age. She was straight out of college. It was her first job. Then we, then we received an, uh, another one, um, which was sort of three months before the um, the final hearing last year, who was 19 years of age, straight out of college. Then after the final hearing, we received a, a girl who was 20 years of age, straight out of college. It was the first, you know, it was the first case to get, you know, and I think as a case such, such as serious and as complex as ours, that we should have someone who's got a bit more experience. Now, we've got, we've been allocated a new social worker now. Now, I'm, you know, the, she was allocated two weeks ago to us, and we've still not we've not received any any word from her or um, you know any communication to say oh you know it'd be nice to int introduce myself. I don't, all I know is a name, um, and that's it. And like I say, they, they say that they work to support and help families, but it's not that they're, they're only safeguarding my children. I can understand that they they focus on my children, but what do we what do we do? You know. We're, we're part of our children's life, and obviously, it's going to be very. It is, it is very upsetting for them. Every single contact we have, we have, we have uh, the crying in the car before they leave us, and we have the, the youngest one is only six years of age, and he's absolutely crying, saying, "Mum, I want to go with you. I want to go." And he, he won't let you go, will no. he? He won't. He won't let you, you go. Another thing, you know? and another thing as well. I think I think it, that has broken my heart so much. Uh, the, the, the younger one, the, the, the social service, the last one we've been in the car, for she look, we lose it. Huh? And then she look at her face and they giggle and they laugh at her face. Yeah, that happened the, at the, 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 the car. And, the, and the, I say her a uh, couple of months ago in the Primark, and she with two other colleagues. And she look at me so, and they say, look, look at her over there, look at her over there. And they stay laughing They're and, and, and laughing, uh, point they? on me and they and they follow me in the Primark where I go, then behind me, watch me, where I go, where I do it. I get very uncomfortable. 
I found the owner, I said, Andrew, come on, get out for here, go, get out for here, leave where you're gonna buy. I had to get out here, look at them following us, and then he look at them behind us, watch us, and giggling on our face. Because they're just young girls, young, young are, girls, straight but, out. But, but there are no more the social worker now, right? No, no, but, but no, they, 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 case, they, they, they still work social service. No, we, 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 I, I, I said to Lauren, I wanted to raise an official complaint through her about Amber, and we heard nothing about it. No. I told her about it. Did you raise a complaint? No, we didn't. Well, I, I, I did. I, 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 made, I made the current social worker aware of, of what happened that day in, in Primark. And um, she, she just said, I'll take it on board, you know, and, and I'll, I'll report to whoever. But that was the last we heard of it. And I, yeah. was, was, did, did they consider your family, friends at all? No, they wouldn't. They wouldn't consider it. They wouldn't. They wouldn't consider it because, it, like I say, my, my family's in Manchester, so it, our whole life revolved around the children. It was just like it, it, it totally ripped the heart out of us when they was removed. What should What should have, What should have happened really then was they should have continued with supporting us and 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 maybe said to me, "Go and get some help for your alcohol and, and go and get some help for your alcohol issues." Leave our, leave the children in our care, but we had to show that we was getting some help. Not just remove the children, and then then you can get help because it, like I say, it, it just made the situation a hundred times worse for us. You know, we it just it just exacerbated everything, and and, and like I say, the, 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 it's supposed to be. It should have been like family. It should. They shouldn't be called children support. Um, support is it children's services? Isn't it now? I think they call it yes, children's yes. support services. It should. It should be family support services because they have adult support services, which we never had any. We should, and children's support services. You know why? Why? Why differentiate between the two? You know, I mean, I I go to Manchester and I see so many families. Um, you know that are, that are absolutely. You know, I, w I wouldn't let my children stay with them. And I think, where's, where, you know, why, why, don't, why, are this, why are children's services not getting involved with people in Manchester? It's such a big city. I've got loads of friends there. I've got loads of family there. And, and you, you just, I mean, where my me, where me mum lives on that estate alone, it's, it's just absolutely horrendous on there. It's, you know, you just wouldn't believe the things you see. You know, children running around with the nappies on yeah. and uh, with, with, with no clothes on. And the, yeah, and they're, and they're all sm smoking drugs and drinking all day. And they don't have any. You don't see any intervention or any of any stories like that. But then you, you move to Middlesbrough, was a, was it less, probably about two weeks. Next thing you know, they're on our back. It was just, it was just crazy. It was just, just totally set us up to fail, didn't they? And you know, myself, you know, I, I, I went to prison. I served my time. You know, and, and look, look like you live in purgatory forever. Yeah. Like if the people come at your crime, you go in prison, you pay your time, you, you'll be I've done, my, I've done my probation as well, because I, 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 even afterwards, after I was released, that wasn't the end of it. I had to go access um, alcohol support services and I also had to attend to a probation officer every single week. And, you know, and, and that all gets on top of you as well. But that's it's all nice. finished now, it's all done with, yeah. you know, and everything. We're, we're in such a better place now. But like I say, it's not being no. recognised. I mean, b before I understand yeah. w when the children were removed, it, we was drinking for the wrong reasons because we was drinking to numb the pain of losing our children. Now, what we did, we sought help for that, and we re we realised that um, you can e you can either go two ways. You can either reduce your drinking down into moderation and drink to be happy and have a nice time, or totally stop drinking. Now, we was told by social services that we had to totally stop drinking, so we had to be totally abstinent from alcohol. So we've done that. We've done as that. We've, we, you know, we've done as our told. But, that, but, but the thing is, is what, no, what it was, what, what we found with, with, the, with the, the judge, ru, the judge ruling, she, she, was, she was a female, um, a female judge, and she was one of the top judges there. She's the wife of, of the, the highest class judge at, at Teesside Crown Court. Now the judge that ruled, um, like I say, she, we, we, was, we was offered no defence by our barrister. It was basically our, our barristers went into a room with um, Middlesbrough Council's barrister, discussed everything and then decided what was going to happen and then they sort of sat those down and said right this is happening and then it was like they, they listened to the, the the judge listened to the to the Middlesbrough Council's barrister's case and her arguments with regards to it and we was told that we couldn't oppose it um, we, we just had no defence whatsoever. So the judge basically just turned around to us and she just spoke to us direct and said, um, we're going to give you contact once a month. If you don't attend these contacts, the contact will be reduced even further. And that was it. I and mean, it was just yeah. like, case dismissed. And it was just like, we had to, we had to go out. And then, so basically we, we, totally, we totally lost. 
Now the situation that we was in last last September, it wasn't it wasn't the greatest because we, we didn't have an argument to put forward because we'd failed the hair and we've, well we didn't fail the blood but we failed the hair test, and we failed having that ankle thing on, which just it was just a reminder every time you saw it, you know. Uh, we thought we'd. I actually, I, actually um, oh, I forgot to say this as well. Um, in February for, for the, the, it, the last meeting. Yeah, at the last meeting in February, um, after because we didn't. I was devastated after the last black review, and um, I actually went and um, I had too much to drink. I, had a, I, had a, I was drinking vodka straight, and I put myself. I, and, and I woke up in intensive care, um, and I was told by. And I had, all, I, had, I had a catheter in. I had a ventilator on. This was in February, just passed, um, and it was just because I was, I was absolutely devastated with, with the outcome from the, from the hearing, and um, and I, I, I had, to, had to, the mental health team come and come and speak to me at my bedside, and I, I was I was only in there overnight, and then I, I, um, I, was, I was discharged. I was okay, um, but I was I was all wired up and everything, and it was a big wake up call for me, and. Um, and, I, and then I received a letter through the post saying that I needed to go and see the mental health team at Rosebury Park, and I thought That's, this is where I'm going to end up. If, if you know, if if, if 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 I carry on letting, you know, so that was so, 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 yeah. So from that day, from, from that day, I stopped, you know, and I, and I went straight to um, the Livewell Centre and I got the support from them. So you know, for six months, Mine. six months has passed now, and um, you know, I'm, I'm in a, a lot better place now than than I was then, and you know, I realised, you know, because the thing is. If anything does happen to me, or if anything happens to Nara, it's not, you know, it, you know, we, we won't be around to suffer the upset, you know. And it's our children, or you know, one of us, you know, my wife who's going to suffer, and my children are going to suffer. You know, they're going to miss us like crazy. So you know, it, it does make you realise, and it just, you know, you have to have sort of a life-changing experience to sort of to realise that. Obviously, she's going to speak to the children, and she has done. And the children have expressed that they want to come home. What I found as well, that they, 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 they try buying the children because children can be, be very materialistic as well. So um, I know that my eldest child receives £40 a week in, in spends. Now he puts £20 in a savings account and he has £20 that he can either save or spend. Now my other children, because they're not teenagers yet, um, they receive £20. So £10 goes in, an, in a savings account and they receive £10. So what they can do is save or spend. Now the foster carers do live in a beautiful house. You know, we, we couldn't offer um, our children what they've got at the current foster carers, you know, apart from our love. Um, you know, and they've, they've, they've kitted my eldest bedroom out in Lego. You know, they've, they've, they've put shelves up for him, and it's they've, they they've, 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 they've done a new bedroom. Yeah, they've done a full, full new bedroom each for them. You know, they live in a big five bedroom house, and they're all together. But the children are of the understanding now that they're not staying in that house now, that they are going to be moving to a new foster carers. And we don't know, we've not been informed now. There was a meeting held last week, and it was, it was to do with introductions about moving them. And what I'm worried about is what they're going to say in this, this next meeting. This next lap review is oh well we've just moved the children into um, the, the new foster carers house we don't want to go disrupting them by moving them back to you know to you they need to settle there first before they can come to us oh, well. does, they, wanted us to, they wanted us to split up and get a divorce as well because she she this is what our solicitor said he said you need to split up with Andrew get a divorce and then you've got more chance of getting the children returned back yeah. to the mother who said she's that not with me I, 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 my solicitor solicitor said yeah. Pa Pam said that. She said, what, what, I say, it's to, get, to have more chance of getting these children back when you go to this final hearing, you and Nara need to split up. And so I, they wanted me to go and live at my mum's in Manchester, and then she'd go to court. Yeah, we're going to live in the street, find no entitlement to end public fund. Yeah.